question is, what does Ryze want to go into after this Trevenant? Is going to be his own Noctowl or the Swamper? In comes a Simul Swap there, catching the Sky Attack. Wadaj actually predicting the Sky Attack throw. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and I hope you've been enjoying the pro tip series. For the third week straight, we have another pro tip here and this will be featuring the combo play. If you haven't gotten a chance to check out my previous two pro tip videos, I'll link them down below. They're definitely helpful for some newer players, but even some experienced players that might not know about certain mechanics and certain strategies. When it comes to combo plays, some of you may already be familiar with it, but in essence, it's throwing two back-to-back -back charge moves to catch your opponents off guard and take out some of their Pokemon that may have energy or to really just swing the match in your advantage. I'm gonna showcase some examples on how this is executed and the, really the benefits of utilizing this. Pretty much every top tier player I know utilize this strategy probably on a regular basis. So if you haven't incorporated this strategy into your gameplay yet, hopefully after watching this video, I'll convince you why it's worth it. And in the end, I'll also show kind of how to counteract potential combo plays. Before we get into the battles, a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you would also like to have early access to my strategies and lineups or see behind the scenes footage of my battles, feel free to sign up in the Patreon link down below. In this first battle here, it's going to be a battle I recently did in the Fantasy Cup. And as you see, it's Ultra League. Again, the format doesn't really matter so much and more so in terms of uh, how it's how the matchup goes. All right, so uh, I'm going to get hit by Iron Head here uh, and that's fine. And we're going to just kind of whittle down the slurp off. So pretty bad lead uh, for me um, off the bat there. Um, and then they do catch up overheat too, which is a little unfortunate because now my moves are debuffed here. And I don't have a lot of great options here for the slurp off because I have a dragon tail steelix in the back, double resisted, and then I have a giratina, which is a dragon type going to a fairy type. So I am going to bring the steelix here and uh, hoping to catch a blind play rough, which is exactly what happens. So that definitely works in my favor. Um, my Steelix is running Earthquake in this specific meta, and uh, I think it gives me really solid coverage against the opposing Steel types, especially stuff like Berserker. And I'm going to save my shields for that Giratina, and you can see I have very little health. But what I know is I left with an Earthquake on my Steelix. And that's the most important part here. And so you can see this Berserker is actually running Iron Head and Close Combat in all likelihood, not Foul Play, which gives it pretty good coverage. Um, but that means that I know my Giratina can definitely survive this incoming charge move it's going to be close combat i don't think they had the energy for the iron head now here's where i'm going to slow it back down to regular speed regular speed gameplay here and here's going to be the combo play i throw a shadow ball here and i'm and there's two reasons why one i want to kill my switch timer a little bit so i can swap out here and two so that i could take my opponent off guard so it wasn't a complete back-to-back -back, but almost back-to-back -back charge moves right um and now because I'm able to land this, this is going to be super effective, hard hitting against the Glaring Weezing. And really the only shot I have at taking it out, right? Um, and we also some, uh, get to uh, Psychic Fangs, which is perfect. I um, mean, even if though this Glaring Weezing has energy, uh, we still have a shield remaining. So we just shield up and then we got the Shadow Call through and that's GG's. So yeah, a really tough matchup for my uh, team, but able to come out of it. All right, so this is actually a battle I did for Sylph Faction, so team format against uh, Sophtof. And this is actually from her POV. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember saving the footage from my side, so I asked her if I could borrow her footage, and she happily provided it for me. So this is a show six, pick three format. Um, but either way, combo plays work in pretty much every format. And so you can see from her POV. And here's what I'm going to show you all, uh, what's most important here. Even if you know the combo play is happening, sometimes you still cannot do anything about it, right? So great catch from her right here. Um, but essentially, I remember specifically playing out this matchup and why it's important is because I knew the combo play is coming, but there's literally nothing I could have done. Um, so we're going to play out this matchup and see. Uh, it looks like I will be going for a hurricane here, which probably should have just baited weather ball, but uh, I thought maybe she would just let it go. Um, either way, this Drapion is going to be pretty tough for my team, mainly because in the back, I have a Deoxys defense. Um, so I'm going to throw this weather ball here just to do some chip damage here, just because I need this Drapion to be much lower for my Umbreon to have a chance against it. I don't want Deoxys defense against this at all, right? Um, and I don't have shields, so that's not great. So that's important to know. And I'm going to slow down real quick and see what happens here. So she not only catches a move on the Gliscor, but left with a crunch. This is really important because she knows she wins charge from priority against the Umbreon and my Pelper's out of the way. And so, and Drapion is 
uh, has a decent amount of attack in Ultra League, especially because Ultra League is very bulky, and you have a Deoxys Fence in the back for myself. And now she knows she's in the driver's seat because Deoxys Fence, because of this bulk, is not going to win CMP against that Drapion. Um, and because of that, uh, I do have Rock Slide, so we're going to throw these. And what she's going to do here, and as you can see, she's going to make the combo play here. She's going to kill the Switch Hammer a little bit, throw this Icicle Spear, and then put me in crunch range. And she's going to swap right here and throw the crunch. And here's the thing. Even having a move there. Oh, Hammer's out of here. She just wants to see this combo play happen. Even if I had a move there, it wouldn't matter because she's going to win charge room priority. So she is going to throw the crunch. And I did not have a move to my knowledge. And because of that, I knew it was coming. I was like, all right, she's going to throw the Icicle Spear and combo play me. There's literally nothing I could do. Uh, our switch timers are also misaligned. So I couldn't swap out and anticipate the combo play. Because of that, that pretty much won her match, right? If I took out the wall ring there, it would have been a different story. Because then my Umbreon can tank out, uh, take out the Drapion, and we we win. Um, but uh, really well played by her. And again, that's one of the situations where the combo play is so strong. Even if you see it coming, you can't do anything about it. Now, this is actually uh, from footage from the recent uh, regionals in uh, Knoxville uh, for the Play Pokemon Championship Series. And it's against Rise to the Occasion versus Wadaj, two uh, of the best trainers um, in North America for sure, and maybe even in the world. And so what I'm going to showcase here is how to kind of counteract the combo play. It is a very tough thing to do, and it takes incredible awareness. So what's going to happen here is uh, obviously Wadaj does not have the team composition against uh, Rise to Occasion in this matchup. Um, now, because of that, uh, but if you look at Ryze's team, he doesn't have a clear Noctile check besides his own, right? His Swampert's okay, but doesn't really want to take a Sky Attack. But he left with a Sky Attack loaded on his Noctile. So, you're going to see this, and he is going to throw a C-Bomb here. Again, you want to kill the Switch Time a little bit, catch your opponent off guard, and then come in with his Noctile to snipe down Wadaj's, right? Wadaj doesn't want to shield this either. But, Wadaj actually makes an incredible play to expect the combo play and comes in actually with the Registeel. Now, this is a huge swing in the matchup now because now with Dodge has uh, the matchup he wants. He wants this Noctowl against the Registeel. Now, Noctowl is still very, very strong and unfortunately it's going to do quite a bit of damage still with the Shadow Balls, but with Dodge is able to at least avoid that potential Registeel versus Swamper matchup. Now, he actively swapped in to that Trevenant, which is a bad matchup for the Registeel, but he was anticipating that combo play. And he knew that, you know, whatever's in the back is probably also weak to knocked out given uh, what Ryze's, you know, backline potentially started looking like with that um, Trevenant coming in. So, as you can see here, this is not a bad situation, but unfortunately, Wadaj is just out of shields. Um, so, Ryze is going to be able to win this matchup still, but the play that Wadaj made is really the best way to counteract the combo play. You know, Ryze just had a team composition ready, so he was able to still play in his favor. But again, that is kind of how you do it. You anticipate it. Now, let's watch this in slow motion, right? I'm slowing this down to 50%. Look at what Dodge's screen. You see him actively tapping on that Reggie seal. So they literally tapped and swapped in at the same time. Would Dodge plan on swapping in before Ryze even swapped in the Noctowl? So it takes incredible prediction. Uh, from Wadaj's uh, standpoint there. And again, it's a very tough skill to master. And even if you like mastered it, it's still very hard to pull off, right? Understanding that your opponent is good enough to pull off the combo play and they have the energy bank. So Wadaj had to know, first off, that Ryze's Noctowl had a Sky Attack ready. And second, that the switch timers were coming up so that Ryze was going to make that combo play. That's essentially how you counteract the combo play. Combo play itself... Kind of a more advanced skill, but counteracting combo play, even more advanced. So these are always things that everyone could kind of hone in on work on. I would say that even though I've been playing this game for years, counteracting a combo play and expecting it coming is still a very, very tough thing to pull off. I'm sure there's definitely plenty of people that already know about this combo play, but again, hopefully those that don't know can utilize this or you can share with friends that are getting into PvP just now. If you have any questions related to other potential mechanics and tips I can cover in the future, feel free to drop it down below. I'll definitely read through them and see if I can make any future videos on it. I do have a number of other pro tips planned for the future as well, so be on the lookout for future tips. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share, subscribe for future content, hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video and I'll catch you all next time.